Hello, everyone. So I didn't bring a dog with me, but if you bear with me through the end of the presentation, you will see a lovely picture of a really cute dog. Promise. So hello, uh, my name is Danny Lev. I am CMO of SciActive, and with me I have Shlomi, CTO and co-founder. SciActive predicts and prevents future malware before it's ever seen the light of day. Cybersecurity has become one of the greatest challenges of this century. With billions of damages in funds, IP, and mission-critical systems, the number of attacks grows at an alarming rate. The problem is that is, there is an investment asymmetry between hackers and, attacker, and defenders. On the one hand, you have the hacker who creates malware very easily, very cheaply, and very quickly. On the other hand, you have the defender who faces the excruciating task of waiting to be attacked in order to respond. And in fact, when they do, it's very time consuming and very expensive. This is the reactive paradigm and this is how it works. When a threat is exposed in a certain organization, it is reported to the security vendor who generates a security me measure and blocks the threat. However, what do hackers do at that point? They make slight modifications to the original code and voila, the malware is back on the market and sometimes even at the same company. This is a vicious cycle and it's not just an effort asymmetry, it's a financial one as well. Since for every dollar invested by hackers on these slight modifications, thousands of dollars are invested by the defenders chasing them. What we believe is that this recycling, this reuse, is actually the black hat's weak spot. You know, it's true that 160,000 new malwares emerge per day, but as it turns out, 98% of them are variants of known versions, and the remaining 1.99% are not descendants, but their cousins that reuse methods and modules. And when you look at an entire attack chain that comprises several malwares and tools, you will not find even one that didn't recycle at least one component. If you look at all the major attacks of recent years, even state-sponsored ones, they all recycle. Stuxnet had a lot of innovation in it, but it did recycle a component based on Configure, a malware that was known two years before Stuxnet. The famous attack on Target reused Black POS, a famous malware that was known a year before the attack on Target. And I can go on and on, but it's the same bottom line. Everybody recycles, everyone reuses, and that is how we plan to catch them. So what SciActive does is fast forward the future of malware evolution. We permute the malware over and over again to predict hundreds of thousands of ways in which hackers will try to evade security measures. Then we use that as training data for a machine learning algorithm that creates a smart detector that can detect future malware before it's ever seen the light of day. This detector is platform agnostic and can be deployed both on the endpoints and network levels. Let us illustrate the concept on a real life story. Poison Ivy is a really famous malware. It's an antique in hacking terms. It's been around since 2006, and yet the industry is still chasing it. We took a sample we found randomly from 2008. You can download it online for free. And we put it into the predictive engine and fast forwarded its evolution. Within three and a half hours, we predicted 36,000 new variants. And we used that as training data for a strong behavioral detector. That detector was able to detect not only the variants that we predicted, it was able to predict other variants we found in the wild from 2012 and 13. In other words, within three and a half hours, hours we managed to, fa to fast forward six years of evolution. Now imagine the power of doing the same thing on a sample from 2014. It basically means that we can provide you today with protections up against variants that will emerge in 2019 and even beyond. So what are we doing here? Basically, we're redefining the cyber equation and putting the defender ahead of the hacker for the very first time. But it's not only that. We increase the entry barrier to generate malware because in order to get around our detector, you would have to write an entire attack chain and all of your malware from scratch, which, as we said earlier, is really complicated and expensive. Our biggest differentiator compared with any other cybersecurity company today is that we don't explore the, the past. We don't look for patterns and similarities. 
Rather, we push our malware as far as possible from the starting point, and that way we know that hackers won't try to repeat uh, similarities and patterns, and we will predict the crazy ways in, the, in which they will try to avoid doing these things. A little bit about the company. So we currently include 15 employees. We were seeded by JVP Cyber Labs, and that's where we're headquartered. Uh, we were founded by two acclaimed cybersecurity specialists, Shlomi Butnaru and Liran Tankman, our CEO. Uh, we were launched in 2013, and at the moment, we're at beta phase. We started with two strategic clients uh, who are helping us as design partners in two major verticals. The first one is a standalone product, which will be an industrial cybersecurity solution. And the second one is an enterprise client that we are basically leveraging the existing cybersecurity measures and adding a future looking layer. And we'll be closing a Series A by the end of the year. So, to sum up, this technology can go anywhere connected cars, mobile phones, and here's your dog <laughs> wearable technology and even electrical turbines, it can really go anywhere. Our vision is to introduce a new standard of proactive, forward-looking technology and to offer a truly future-proof protection for the very first time. Thank you. Uh, two questions. You want to start? So, uh, we have a lot of investment in Sequoia and security. We are investors in FireEye, in Palo Alto, in other. There is a proof that today nobody finds a solution that is 100%, and people can prove it. Hard for me to imagine, ignore six years, mm -hmm. that there is a way that you can work and predict what all the hacker will do. And fundamentally, not a, nobody believes in the cyber security of domain that you can really stop all attack. so mm -hmm. what proof do you have to, because I'm not talking about six years, I'm, I'm a lot less, uh, I'm talking about current situation, even without the future, or in six months. Okay, so it's a two-part answer. The first is that it's been actually mathematically proven there's no such thing as a perfect detector. What we're doing here is increasing the entry barrier significantly. In a typical advanced persistent thread that includes tens to hundreds of tools, you would have to write the entire thing from scratch. Now, one brand new malware that, that doesn't reuse any modules or methods or previous malware families costs around $5 million to make. Now, imagine an attack chain that needs tens and even hundreds of those. This means that we increase the entry barrier significantly. Increase. Technically, and that's because the second... Increase the barrier, it's very different than the statement of future proof. It's mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Increase the barrier, everybody increase the barrier, I agree, but uh, there is a huge difference between doing 99 and 100, it's infinity. Yes, yes, but if you think an entire kill chain, say for example you, that you can create the best backdoor that has never seen before, it's one component of an entire kill chain. So in that part I can tell you that, okay, we can get you 0 0.99. But if you get the reconnaissance phase and the backdoing phase and the exploitation phase, it's probability and the probability goes up and up and up, which is more than 0 0.99 on a single component. What is the integration you need with the customer? Excuse me? Integration with customers. There are two types of integrations. The first one, in, uh, as Danny said, in the enterprise level, we are riding on existing, uh, existing technologies. For example, someone uh, in, uh, sniffs data or packets, we can d digest that. In the case of industrial, we have two types of uh, uh, scenario. One is to be incorporated on top of the endpoints, for example, HMIs in the SCADA environment. And the second one is uh, uh, listing on the network traffic and based on that, running our detector for prevention or detection. And who is so the what, Just to, you tell us three things. What exists? You are working today on any endpoint, any variation operating system, okay. in, a, in okay. any mobile device. So I'm trying to understand okay. slide of marketing and reality. Okay. Today we support an uh, operating system of Windows from 2000 to Windows 8, 64 bits, 2000 megahertz of the HMI environment in SCADA 
in SCADA which use uh, older versions. In the terms of uh, other operating system, we support any Linux variation from kernel uh, version 2.4 and up. Uh, in the case of the network, we support both enterprise protocols of the environment like LDAP, DNS, etc. of the enterprise, and also a couple of proprietary protocol in the SCADA environments. Tal, last question. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your day. And